Okay. Hello, everyone. We are back to another fireside chat. This is our fireside chat 18. And we had a, a small break because we were on holidays last week. So uh, we didn't record last week, but we are back this week. We, if, oh, first of all, thank you very much for all of you that are following those chats and sending us comments. And, and uh, like, it's always great to have the feedback that, that you are all sending to us. And if you're new to these chats, basically the way it works, like we normally like uh, talking to each other, we decided to start recording those topics. But this is quite informal. Like we normally pick a topic just before we record. So a lot of the, the conversation here is half-baked ideas and thoughts. It's just like a chat. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and this time we picked learning. We were talking about learning, the different ways that we learn. Uh, we decided to do more like a, on a personal level, like, why do we learn what we learn? How learn shape us? And and basically, like all the different ways that we we learn, and and it would be good for for us to to know more uh, about how each one of us do things because we can learn from each other, right? <laughs> so so guys, uh, learning. How how do you face learning, and how learning shaped you, like in your journey? Jose, do you want to start, or shall I? No, go, go. Okay. Well, um, I, I think uh, one thing that I would say is that I, I have a curious nature. I've always had a curious nature. So there's one aspect, which is that I was always, I always wanted to find out how things worked, right? And this shaped my professional life as well. Every time when I was younger in, well, even before software development, I, uh, at university, when I got my first PC, I I remember taking Windows 95 off it <laughs> and installing Linux Slackware. And there wasn't anything. Uh, I mean, I was I still try to go back and think, well, what did I get out of that? Right. I mean, you know, I spent days and nights just trying to get the damn kernel to compile for my latest <laughs> graphics card. Uh, and it wasn't really a game. So what, what did I get? And I think it was just that curiosity. You know, I wanted to know how everything worked within it and getting things to work really motivated me. And I think that's one side I would say that was really interesting. And the other thing is that I always wanted to, I, I would learn to get things done, to have some kind of impact or to create something. And this actually got me learning many languages. And in fact, Java was not taught at my university. I taught it to myself. And I did my final year project in the language that wasn't taught to me, purely because I wanted to learn Java. Because again, it was the next curiosity thing. It had just come out in yeah, around 95. And there was a lot of um, noise about it. and. And there was a lot of promise about the language and object-oriented programming and so on. And I just wanted to learn it. And so I taught it to myself uh, outside my lectures. And I decided to do my final year project so I would learn more. So I think these two things, um, an, a curiosity that kind of fueled my learning and still does to the very day. And the other thing is that I, I like to learn things that help me have some kind of impact or achieve some kind of result. So those, those results also motivate me. And I think those are the two kind of main drivers, if I was to take it from a very personal point of view, that actually kind of made me learn languages, learn technology, learn the skill of developing software, basically. You know, for me, the, the, there is that how things work, but I feel like that was not my main driver. For me, it was about creating stuff. Um, in particular, it was around creating games. <laughs> this is how I actually got interested in, you know, software development in, in general. No, and then later on, you know, hacking or security, this this kind of things. Of course, you need to have an inquisitive mind to, no, to to actually perform well on, on that, no? Like you do want to learn uh, and asking the right questions is, is, is I think, a big part of, of that learning, no? Uh, but for me, it was about creating. It was about, oh, I, I just played this game. 
wouldn't it be cool if instead of doing X, Y, Z, it did, you know, <laughs> this other thing, but how do I do that? Right? Like how do the, and then, you know, you start scratching the surface. Right. And, uh, uh, and that's, that's how I, I got really, really, really into software development. Right. Like I remember the, the first few things were, you know, writing programs in q basic you know circles and things that you know you press certain keys and it will you know sound or do this or uh there was this it was it called um the, the tanks or whatever like my my own version of you know the whole uh, you you throw there's a parable uh, there's a parable and you know you you're hitting the other tank and you need to give the velocity this kind of so so that was what drove me <laughs> into asking the question it's like how do i do this? how do i make this happen no? <laughs> you know that for me like um I had some curiosity, but not to the level that a lot of people say, like Mesh, you were saying, like uh, that is very common in our industry for some people. So like, I want to know how things work. So for example, I was never that that child that was uh, disassembling clocks and, and stuff like that or, or microwaves and whatever, right? So I, I didn't have that kind of curiosity. My my learning towards like in, in IT was similar to more to Jose. Um, I, I started with gaming and doing like coding in basic and, and typing a lot of things on the old computer to see like some squares moving around. And that was a football game apparently, right? So you saw like a bunch of squares, which a ball that was also a square and that was basketball and football. They were exactly the same. they just different amount of squares, but they were different games right so and then but but like i have a very competitive nature and and my competitive nature is not only with other people but with myself and i think that a lot of my learning came from me trying to do something oh can i do that now can i do that now and keep myself entertained and always so so that was quite focused but but it, it had to entertain me i didn't have like what a lot of people say like i, I, I was never cu curious about everything you know I was curious about certain things that would keep me entertained. And then I would pick that thing and really try to know everything about that thing, be very good at that thing. So there was that personal aspect of internal competition, if you like. I don't know even if there is a proper word for that, but that drove a lot of my learnings in, in general, mainly in my young childhood. It changed later on, but that's how it was in the childhood. I think I think it's actually really important um, to talk about childhood when you talk about learning, because we have a um, we have a much bigger appetite for learning in general as children than we do as as adults, right? And part of it maybe I I'm not sure uh, I don't think so, but maybe related to you know biology and so on, but. I think there's a large part that is related to learned behavior. Uh, so in when we are children, we have we have this, and I think this is where <clears throat> you talk about that beginner's mind, you know, you you have it naturally, and you're not afraid to 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 get into things that you are not necessarily good at, or you you may not achieve the results immediately, right? And I think as we, and and that's why, for example, when children are learning languages, they learn so much better and so much quicker than adults because we constantly have this fear of uh, what people will say if we mispronounce something and so on. You know, I'm trying to learn Spanish right now and it's super difficult, but I learned three of the languages in my childhood and don't even remember how I learned them, right? And so there's that fear, but also there is this um, uh, the, the, the the practice itself as well. The fear, I think, stops us from practicing uh, and and makes us uncomfortable. And we try it less and less, and we get bored by by these challenges rather than um, more motivated by them as we grow older. I think I think our relationship with learning changes from children towards adulthood so like just speaking on that like uh sometimes i think that if i try to abstract what you're saying is like 
if we once we stop caring about what other people think about us it kind of all of a sudden it frees us you know like to to experiment other things or to behave in ways that you wouldn't just because you you are always thinking about how other people will what what would they think about me or see what i'm saying and, yeah. and i think that this is this is when you're a child you don't really care too much and as adults we sometimes you should not care that much you know mm. yeah. yeah i i think th there is an important part in there which is related to what the goal is as a child learning is the goal you're learning because yeah. that is what's motivating you to learn and as adults we we actually start thinking more about uh what that will help us achieve so you know the two things i was talking about there's the curiosity and then there was the results and i think as when i was younger the curiosity was much bigger element to my learning than the results sure you get yeah, older yeah. it has become more more so yeah no it, it, it makes me think about more traditional learning and academic learning no but both from the point of view of <clears throat> what you are expected no, to do how you're expected to perform and and the kind of unchallenged no be beliefs or assumptions no like a uh, you know making a mistake in class is like a, you know, a bad thing no and you should avoid that and then you know you start getting this fear no of, of screwing up with well it, that screwing up is part of the learning no and uh, that that's how you know what not to do or what's what no uh, so <clears throat> and i think that's that's uh because because i've had the luck of having both not like you i also went to university so i learned a lot of stuff in the traditional sense that's really good especially around problem solving and around you know like having a method to the madness when you don't know the answer right like so you you i have all of these tools and i'm gonna go boom 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 and and see what i you know what i gather from that and then like slowly scratching the surface until you get where you want to go you no know? so that's that was really good and that i got i think from more of the academic side of things you no know? but the exploration or the uh you know, let's try this out. Wouldn't it be cool to no? And I don't care. Like that's not the way that it's supposed to be. Fine, let's, let's do it anyway. No, that kind of stuff is is more on the you know do it yourself side of things. No, on the hey, I want to. How, how would it be? You know, this thing. No, and and those two are uh, they they complement each other. But if you're if you're too much on one side, if you're just you know learning or studying for you know, passing a test or uh, uh, this kind of, you know, framework for, for grading, no? I feel like that's, to some extent, detrimental, no? Do you know that the, the learning to achieve a goal, um, these, of course, this became part of my life, uh, as Mesh was mentioning before, mainly on the professional side, right? So there are loads of things that we need to learn because we need to achieve something, we need to do something, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we are paid to do a job, and, and but the the learning for the sake of learning, uh, there there was a, a personal aspect to it, like in terms of us wanting to well, I want to become better and stuff. But but you know, like before we were talking about that, sometimes we don't do things because of other people. But I have a story uh, that I had the opposite effect. So I studied in in public schools uh, in the countryside in Brazil. And of course, they, they were not great schools, but, and I managed to be like one of the best students. But again, I didn't know how low the bar was, you know? So, so then I went to university uh, in a much bigger city outside. And when I got there, like I had like one of my first shocks that, that when I got to university, because it was a much larger city, so people with much better education uh, than the one that I had. And the first group of people that I met, I remember that um, I, I, in my first year, I met those, those guys, they were talking, they were two friends. One did like uh, electrical engineering, I think that is the, the, the name in English. And the other one was in my class doing computer science first year, but this was his second, he was doing 
two degrees in two separate universities. So, and those guys, like I was 17 to 18 when I got to university and I felt that I was okay, but I knew nothing, right? So in the first, those are, they were both first, first years. They, I remember until today, they were talking between them in how to automate a farm. So they were talking about creating like, uh, like uh, boards that, you would, that would measure the humidity of the air and the soil, and that would trigger the irrigation system of a farm. And because one was doing electrical engineering, he would design the, the board and stuff, and one would put the embedded software and stuff. And I was like, and that was the kind of people that I just first met. I had absolutely no clue what they were talking about. And one of those guys, uh, I liked history. And I thought that just reading about the wars, as most people did, was good enough. I went to this guy's house, like in the first few weeks. And there was a book about some ancient uh, civilized, Chinese civilization and stuff. So, so he was way past all the ordinary history that we learn. So... As soon as I came across those kind of people, that really put my knowledge in perspective. And, and those group of people really pushed me up in a way, not them themselves, but being around them, I felt ignorant, but, but that had a positive effect on me. So, you know what, I need to step up in my game, you know. Uh, that, that's a, that is a, uh, it's actually really funny you should say that because like even when the the thing about i mentioned about getting unix slackware when i got my pc the person who gave me the cds for the unix uh, linux slackware was my the, the the guy next door and he mm -hmm. told me oh this is a thing uh, and you know i i work with it i like it and he showed it to me and i really loved it and that what created that curiosity. I think it, environment is extremely important, right? Because, you know, if I if I had been in a different environment, I probably would have gone in a different way, right? So yeah, I think what, what you're saying is, right, in a way, it's, you know, luck that you, you, you get exposure to certain kind of people that you are impressed by. And, and so in a positive way and so that you you want to to kind of re replicate or you want to kind of be a similar type of person right and i and so one thing is luck you know you get lucky that you you get people where you have positive um, uh, experiences with but and i think there is an important part of cultivating that as well right and i think this is probably what you you getting at yeah. is that you know, initially it can be luck, but as you go go along, uh, you shouldn't just rely on luck for you to be uh, around people that would have a, a positive impact in your learning. Yeah, th this is what I would say, because like uh, for me, like going to university was such a shock because like, uh, I, look, don't get me wrong. I love my, my childhood friends, but like growing up the countryside, their life was barbecue and and whatever, right? So there was not much in, in the countryside going on. When I met those people, like from Santos and Sao Paulo, like much, much larger cities that went to private school and stuff, they had far, they were far more ambitious. You know, like the, the, the conversations that they were having, they, they wanted to change the world, right? So, so they, they, were, they were discussing things that for me was changing the world, right? So about big things they were talking about. Uh, and, and even like I remember in, in the university, like people talking about uh the uh well nature and climate and all this kind of stuff you know that i didn't have access to those conversations but um uh, i learned in there that i could change my friends as well this is exactly what you're saying man. so i said like you know what i need to be smarter uh in placing myself into uh groups where i can learn from and i took that to my work as well so choosing the, the, the job, the kind of work that I would uh, do, the kind of people that I would hang out with. So that, from, that was something that stuck with me until today. It is, of course, there are times that you want us to talk about some rubbish and have a laugh and have a drink and stuff. But the people that you want to be, at least that I chose to be a bit closer, are normally people that I have very interesting conversations and I learn a lot. And 
yeah, and coming to the UK was another big shock. Then I had another <laughs> reality check of uh, how much I didn't know. And, but that also had a much uh, very positive impact in my life as well, in terms of learning more about many other things. You know, there because uh, what you were saying is a bit of a, let's call it positive envy, you know, to, mm. to some extent. Is, is that idea of, yes, it's not great to compare yourself with others, but there is an aspect of, of that comparison that it's going on, right? And, and it can be uh, something that fuels your desire for betterment no? and, and for you know, improving and for, and there's a good aspect to that. And that's, I, I think, um, you know, having access to, to that. No, like if you, the worst thing that can happen is being big fish in a small, no, the, the big mm -hmm. fish in a small pond kind of thing, right? Like you think, you know, everything you're like, and, and that's very comfortable and that is very, Uh, you know, your ego will definitely <laughs> have a, a great time with that. Um, but it's when you start going outside of that, when you start looking to see, you know, what, what else is possible, you know, and you realize you know, you're able to kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm here and you know, there's all of these other things that I need to do, you know, to be there. Uh, I, I feel like that's a very, it's humbling. But at the same time, it kind of like, uh, at least for me, it, it, it lights a fire, no? <laughs> it's like, yeah. ah, yeah. like, and, and, <laughs> yeah, and, it. yeah, and it's not just about, like, for example, because, like, th those people, it's not a competition, as you were saying, right? So you're not trying to learn more to be better than, it's not about that. It's just being inspired by their knowledge. I said, wow, I'd love to be that knowledgeable. And, and, and then acquiring that knowledge, that might not be exactly the knowledge that those people have. Might be something different, right? That you are, but but it's. I think I discovered the enjoyment or the joy, of knowing things well, you know, like so that that you could talk about something in depth, and at, uh, with time you can talk about more things in depth, and that there is a lot of joy in acquiring that knowledge. So. I think that I was able to balance the goals, like learning for the goal. And this is my professional career. There is a lot of that. But I, I learned also to keep that, that thing on the childhood, that learning is the, uh, the goal, as you are saying, Mesh. I, I think that when you are surrounded by people that you always have interesting conversations, you, you, become, you learn how the joys of learning things, you know? Yeah. And, and having those conversations. Uh, actually, actually, this is a form of learning the the uh, uh, the dialectical and the dialogical, and I can never remember which one it is, but I think it's dialectical con conversation that actually is the purpose is to uh, get better understanding, not to win an argument, right? And this is, um, and then the more you know, the more you bring to the conversation. And like, uh, you know, in a way, this fire chat is an example of that, right? That, you know, we talk, we enjoy talking to each other because actually, as we speak to each other, we learn from each other. And we even learn from formulating our own thoughts. And not only, you know, of course, that learning, part, but the process itself is, is extremely enjoyable, is social. It, it's kind of a sense of belonging, right? Mm -hmm. And this... And I think, you know, if you put yourself in the right kind of environment, you will you will grow according to, you know, what's important within within that in environment. So so in a way, what you were saying about, you know, being quite uh, selective about, you know, the kind of company that you keep and we can go into our communities and everything else later. It's very important because actually those are the things that motivate you in a particular direction uh, uh, on your own development, right? And I think that what makes it interesting, I think you mentioned something that is very important there. Um, when selecting those groups, let's say, you can measure the quality of the conversation by exactly what you said, Mesh. You are the, the people in those conversations, they are not trying to win an argument. 
right? So they are exploring ideas. They are curious in how other people think. There's no competition. There's no arguments. There's no we. It's different from ah, oh, we, we have this problem. You need to make a decision and move forward. No, that conversation is all about learning, and everyone involved in the conversation is in the same mindset. They are curious about others. How do you think about this? Why do you think this? Oh, you mentioned that. That's I never heard about. Can you expand on that? That's how the conversation goes about. You know. Yeah. 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 Talking about this subject, there's there's also a, a challenge that is kind of inherent to that, right? Because <clears throat> let's say you you tend to meet with the same people, you tend to, like, especially if you enjoy you know, the, this kind of stuff. So it's very easy for you to kind of uh, let's say get for, for let's say for that that external input to become kind of stale. Right? Especially the more you know people, and the more you know, it's it's a bit, uh, <clears throat> it, it yeah, it's a bit of a challenge to keep, you know, bringing in new ideas and bringing in new inputs, no, that that will trigger reflections and and that kind of stuff. And I feel like that's one of the things that as, you know, as as I've been progressing my professional development, uh, has become kind of, you know something that I pay a lot of attention to, right? So I would even, if I, if, if I don't agree with certain things or if I, like I would still go and look into them and try to find, no, so, so that's one, one aspect. Another aspect is uh, cross-pollinating from other fields, right? Like, you know, reading about biology, reading about, you know, even, it, it doesn't even have to be something like a, uh, non-fiction you know like even fantasy right or 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 storytelling from other areas can trigger an idea or trigger and and i find like that's one of the things that i kind of dedicate a lot of effort into right and um yeah like things like podcasts or you know watching talks or you know things like the other are there any other things like that that you do or like i you, i, I i'd you, actually just like Sorry, Jose, I'd like to po just kind of pick on that thing about cross-pollination because it's a, it's a very important idea. And uh, it's it's about a, in uh, in Mastery, the, the, the book by, um, I forgot his name now, but um, so uh, it's Robert Greene, yes. Uh, he actually talks about the different levels, like when you come to achieve mastery, and to talking uh, at some point you become proficient you become very comfortable in what you do but when you start to create new knowledge if you don't have um, a good level of awareness and knowledge in areas that are that can somehow add to to your area you stop there invention stops you can't invent beyond it because it becomes super difficult to just invent in a particular silo and you have to have this as as you become better at thing uh, something you have to become better at other things as well to have this combinatorial thing so that you can create new things and i and what you just said reminded me of that so i thought that would be interesting to uh and, and there, there's also an aspect of a you know, you can you can surround yourself with the right input with the uh, you know people that kind of like will stimulate that uh, kind of stuff. But uh, there is an aspect of the having a beginner's mind, no, or or be willing to learn as well, which is I think quite quite important. In that, huh? Yeah, there, there there are there are things uh, I sometimes struggle uh, with the idea of cross-pollination, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain. Because, for example, where, where is the limit? Because I'll tell you my my own experience. Because, for example, as, as you all know very well, I've been always involved with communities, right? So going out and learning with other people and, and, and learning and sharing has been part of me as a professional since day one. I was involved with communities in Brazil, even before coming to the UK and starting communities and stuff like that. So going out and speaking to people have always been part of who I am. 
however, how far do we go? This this is the, the point that I wanted to make because, for example, I went to Java community. It was one of the largest in the world, the one that we have in Sao Paulo. Uh, but it's still a Java community. But, but, but for example, I think the point that I'm trying to make is I think it's great to go out, but in, in order for me to, to have a meaningful conversation or enjoy a repeatable conversation with some people, I need to have some common foundation, you know? There is something that needs to, that, that you have in common. So then we can talk about what we have in, the, the differences that we have with a more civilized way, in a less confrontational way. And, and so, I feel less likely, for example, to join communities or or speak to people that are completely different from me uh, in in other aspects of life, for example. That so you see what I'm saying? I need to find some common. I, I think know. one thing we were talking about cross pollination. I, the, I mean, the thing I was talking about, and maybe Jose that you were talking about, maybe in slightly different and central you picked on the community aspect actually what i was thinking about is like uh robert green actually talks about doesn't talk about it from a community's perspective per se he talks about it from a knowledge and kind of where other knowledge kind of cross mm -hmm. uh, cross different uh, bodies of knowledge no that may mm -hmm. have common ideas or or common commonalities exactly. no so, so so for example i felt that i i learned a hell of a lot from uh, uh, Christopher Alexander, right? And mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of software developers can say so. Uh, uh, and he was an architect, like a normal, real architect, right? Mm -hmm. So, and but the kind of things that he said and the kind of, um, a, uh, let's say, insights that he had have a lot to do with how we think of our, like how we model our problems and how we design and all these kind of things. So. So the combining his uh, the body of knowledge from architecture of the real world into the software world was actually very uh, it's very interesting and it's been interesting mm -hmm. for myself and for it's, many it's other actually, people. It's actually it's actually like taking the learnings from him trying to solve a problem in his body of knowledge, right? Because you're not mm -hmm. really taking things from. Are you know architecture other than you know architectural patterns or the the words themselves? No, you're you're kind of calling it the same thing, no? but you're not going into whether a door needs to go here or you know. No, uh, no, you're thinking about you are, the, the, you're the way he thinks. The approach. Exactly, yeah, you're the taking the thinks. approach you're, and exactly. the concepts that he's kind of extrapolated and abstracted. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, exactly. And, this, and yeah, sorry, go on. Go, go, go. Sorry. No. So, so th th that's what I mean. And I think from, I, I, I see, see what you mean, you know, like you can't, I can't walk into a, a you know, like a, an architect's community, let's say, you know, a gathering where they're talking about, you know, b b buildings and then head in there. And, you know, that's a community, that's an event talking about buildings. They're not talking about personal things. They're not talking about personal mm -hmm. relationships. They're talking about architecture, physical architecture. I can't then go there and stick my oar in. I would feel very uncomfortable. And I think if that's what you mean, then for sure. Yeah, I, I took a more uh, broader uh, thing because, like you, you mentioned, Jose, like uh, I think that I don't know if you mentioned like us being when you when you form a group, then then you have a group behavior and stuff, but you are not validating that behavior, not getting put from outside. I think I was getting more from from that perspective, uh, but but for example, but in terms of just learning from other fields and stuff, then then totally, then then I'm totally aligned. Uh, for example, one thing that I love is when I meet people that have different professions. Of, of I like even better like when they have that degree of connection to their profession, the same way that I have the the connection to my profession, or we have uh, uh, the connection to our profession. So it's great when you find someone that is passionate about their profession and they have a different profession. Then, then I really like uh, talking to them. But I was more like about like when people have completely different uh, opinions about views of the world and stuff like that. That's what I, I was coming from. But but that's probably a different uh, conversation. I think that one thing about the that is the learning. But like we, we talk a lot about 
practicing as well, right? Because we learn a lot of stuff, but like certain things we learn for the sake of learning as we've been discussing, but like things that we actually need to do, work related, then we read a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean that we can just apply it. So, so how, how do we bridge that uh, knowledge to, how can I say, uh, impact? Uh, as we... experience, yeah. To yeah. Turning into, yeah. Um, I think there, there's, there's the, the, you know, the learning wheel, right? This another model, uh, no, is and and you know, if you're familiar with agile and this kind of stuff, like PDCA, like it takes different shapes, no. But the idea is more or less the same. Like you, you go when you're learning, you're going through this cycle, no, where, um, to some extent, you you deciding what to do you doing the thing then you need to reflect about what you what you did no and and extract you know some insights from it probably then connect those insights to what you already know and then you can you can go back into the loop no and start again decide what to do do it and it's like no no and what i see a lot of people doing is they are stuck no, in the planning, doing, planning, doing, planning, doing, no, and they, they don't go into that reflecting stage or they don't go into connecting. So when you're doing that, it's very, well, I, I would say that the learning that you're doing is minimal. It's very, very, very little, right? And this is why things like, uh, like Kadas or deliberate practice or, you know, this kind of stuff where you actually have to do, but then you're also reflecting on, on the things that you're doing right or um you know action learning sets where you you're doing this as a group no and you're you're learning from a case or from a situation and then go back and and apply it and then go back and share the results so if you don't go through those then you're kind of stuck and it's it, the opposite can happen as well right like <laughs> reflecting really and then not doing anything that's also that's also a problem no that's a bit of a paralysis by analysis uh, analysis paralysis exactly no <laughs> so um, yeah there, there is actually i think uh, there is a model like can't remember the the author that it was from a very long time ago um well actually i say long time ago about 20 25 years ago <laughs> but okay. because when you were talking to me about this i i I kind of talk, did a talk on it ages ago and I don't remember anything else, but this thing jogged my memory is that they talked about like, it talked about, I think four things, like observing or absorbing and doing and interacting, which is again, the thing that we were just talking about, you know, like you, you're not after you, you don't just observe and then do, but you, uh, you know, and then go back to observe and do kind of that that loop. But then there's two other things. There's interacting, which is, and there's then there is reflection. So interacting is this dialect or dialogical debate that you you have with others, people who know similar things and so on. And reflection is something that is more about organization of your own thoughts as well. Of course, you you reflect while you are talking as well. But, you know, there is an, a different element of reflection, right? So so we kind of forget that reflection element, as you're saying, as well. And we just, you know, kind of get stuck in that loop of, of just doing. And in fact, in, you know, there is another, another element to this, which is the, the repet repetition, which is more related to skill, right? There's so many things around this, by the way, I want to talk about, but, um, but it's... Um, you know, repetition is, is that doing or is that something else? You know, doing is something you do in your job and you're learning by doing. You observe someone do, to do doing something and then you go ahead and do that, right? And uh, and you interact and reflect. But what about the bit that is related to skill, the repetition element, right? Hmm. There, there is like something that happens even before that. Uh, there are things that are part of your job. Like, for example, writing code, right? Let's say that you are a developer and you are writing code. So you will be writing code most of the day, right? So if you are not stuck in meetings, right? So 
but normally like you'll be writing code i was uh, gonna say i wish <laughs> exactly right so, so most of developers today so yeah yeah so writing code is the last yeah we don't do that a lot uh, but yeah. like the but but let's say like uh the repetition sometimes is already inherited inherit inheritance Inherent. to your job yeah so so it's something that you do like so you need to write code so you do that every day and every day that you do that you you inspect you try to see how you can improve and so on so forth but the i think that sometimes that there are things that are not part of your job that you are learning you are studying outside you are reading a book or you saw a talk or, or you acquired some knowledge but we feel that we cannot apply so I mean, so either we don't have the space or, 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 or something. This was true for me, for I believe that it's true for everyone that you go and learn and then you feel that, well, but uh, how do I now apply this if I don't have the space or it's not part of my job? And I felt that, I know that sounds very simple what I'm gonna say, but just volunteering to do the job, you know, uh we, we have like a a friend probably mash will know who i'm talking about he he was amazing like he's a guy this guy would volunteer to do everything he wanted to learn he would volunteer to do the job so like give it to me give it to me and and i feel that this is a thing that i that i, that I changed as well like mainly after maybe just in the my job just before cojudence but certainly accentuated with cojudence as well is you said, you know what, like, first of all, developing the confidence because you learn something, but sometimes you don't have the confidence that you can do the job. Or you say, you know what, yeah, it's great, but it's not going to be applicable in my context. So you are always finding an excuse in order not to apply. So this was common uh, to me in the past as well. So I start saying, you know what, like, what if I stop saying that and say, like, I will push for it. I will volunteer to do the job. I'll see until someone says no, I'll keep pushing. And, and then all of a sudden, I, was, I felt that I could start applying. Not everyone would say no to me. Sometimes they would, but like most of the time, as I was volunteering to do the job, I was able to do the job. And, and, and you have the confidence to do the job. And then all of a sudden, you are now putting that learning into practice. And the more you do, the more confident you become in doing that. But I think that there is that bridge, even before you get to the repetition, before you internalize, is that psychological state to, to create that environment for you to apply that knowledge. The, uh, yeah, the opportunity for experience. In fact, um, I, uh, there are a number of things and I, I find it helpful to, to, uh, uh, to kind of almost divide them in a different way. So you've got knowledge you've got skill and you've got experience and i think it helps to it helps me at least to think about it in that mm -hmm. way uh like you know you, you need all of those things right as you Mesh, go, just just uh define those three so so everyone is on the same uh oh okay yeah <laughs> let me let me make it up no, because like <laughs> so, I, 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 I believe that i know what a definition is given uh to previous conversations we had along okay. those lines but it would be good to <laughs> For for people listening, that they understand what you mean by the three. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So so the way I I see it is it, like no, knowledge is 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 n n understanding. It's knowing things. It's it's you know you can things read that you it. know. Yeah. Exactly. You can read it. Someone tells you, and you know it, right? So it's not related to to experience or skill. It's the things that you know, and even that requires repetition for you to to because knowledge has a like a half-life right so you know if you read a book quickly you'll know it uh, uh, like straight after you'll know exactly what's going on but if you don't do any repetition on that it will the half-life is much lower and at some point you won't you won't even uh, know anything about what the, what you read right all the good things and so on and it's often like that's why i tell a lot of people you know even if you're just gonna write things down afterwards or go back and read the content or something or even better do a lightning talk or someone try exactly. to explain, explain the book explain them somebody. explain them to people like, yeah exactly and and that that's what i call knowledge it's just about knowing stuff it's like a quiz show you know you what is the capital of this and you know right that's knowledge 
Okay? And that's how I see. Then you've got skill. And skill is effectively innate, right? It's it's when you internalize something to the back of your kind of the, the more primitive parts of your brain where it becomes effortless and you do it without even thinking, right? So your hand, eye, and mind becomes one. And that comes in repetition of doing, right? So knowledge is repetition of learning or reading or watching. And then there's the repetition of doing, which is skill. And so that that's and but the, it's skill is very much related to repeatable action. So so you know uh, uh, co coding a, a method, you know knowing your shortcuts, knowing to kind of move from one part of your you know uh, editor to the next part of the editor. You're doing this over and over again. There is no novelty. It's 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 finite set set of actions. And the context is always the same. And through repetition, you kind of take it into innate skill, right? And experience is something else. Experience where is the, the space is wide, right? So you can never attain all of it. It's actually uh, situations that are almost unique in every aspect that are happening to you. And through going through these unique aspects over and over again, you start building this framework in your mind with through this experience of many different scenarios, you can react to a brand new situation. And to me, I, I think of that as experience. So you gather all these experience of scenarios to then to use that almost as a knowledge base. I'm using the word knowledge, so maybe confusing people, but to kind of get to 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 novel situations, to be able to handle no new and novel situations. I think this is what you talk about. You know, the more experience you have, the more new and novel situations, when you come to them, you can, you can deal with. If you have already seen that situation over and over again, and you just do it without even thinking, that's actually skill, right? So I, I so, will throw another one in there. Uh, I would say that the experience are the things that you experience, like you live through you you do and so you acquired you had that experience of doing something or being in that situation but there is a fourth one that i'm going to throw in there is wisdom mm -hmm. the, so the collection of those experiences the knowledge creates wisdom is, yeah creates wisdom and so That's with the wisdom point. we will know when to apply that knowledge and how and, and now I feel that like I'm in to a... which situation? <laughs> That's good. And, and That's now good. I feel like I'm in a role playing game. You know, we're building <laughs> characters. <laughs> we're building characters. Hey, we're building yeah. knowledge. We're building exactly. knowledge. How many points do we spend in skill? How many points in skill? And... How many points? In... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I must say, I've never played a role playing game in my life. You know, I still can't imagine how it works. And I know both of you play quite cool. often. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so then, um, for example, there is another topic here that um, I felt that it also helped a lot my learning. It's slightly different from what we were talking about, the practice and, the, and acquiring skills, is uh, critical thinking. It's because, like, we learn from others. We mentioned about, like, learning from others being exp uh, and, and do the thing over and over again. But there was a, there was a time as well that I said, okay, yeah, I... I <laughs> It started when the, the the things that you start learning from other people, they start conflicting, right? You go to person A and this person A says, no, this is how I do things and that works well. And then you go to person B and that person B has a completely different view and person C so and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden you step back and say, look, it's great to learn from all of them, but they are conflicting views. So I need to build my own view of this. And that's when you start questioning those things right so you have like the critical thinking so every because you need to distill that information maybe now where we are for, for fuck's sake like just you want to learn something you google how do you even distinguish of what is what is real what is not what is a valid so for example when you are learning something you don't even know you are not in the position to know if the person that is telling you something or whatever you are reading that book that, that website is a reliable information, you know, is an information that, that you should follow. And, and, and then this also took me a long, a while uh, that, you know what, like, yes, I need to read more. I need to talk to learn about what other people do, but like, it's not just because someone does something that they do well, <laughs> that is very effective. Like a, lo a lot of people don't do things well, right? 
Yeah. And, and you know, you know, the funny thing is, um, I, I mean, say, same thing. Uh, uh, now I built almost like a, a, a reaction that when I find someone really convincing, who's being very convincing, I'm thinking, mm, <laughs> you're really simplifying this, aren't you? <laughs> it's not like that at all. I, you're really convincing, so that means that it's not like that. Things are, mm-hmm. things are and you often you realize at some point that, you know, like people, when they want to put a, a, a point across, they will accentuate certain aspects of an argument and they will downplay other aspects and so on. And suddenly you, you, before you know it, you're in a cult. <laughs> and, this, and, and, this, <laughs> and this, you have to have a very healthy kind of cynicism of, right? Is that, you know, when someone is being, uh, very convincing or uh, what's the word um, charismatic or that kind of thing you know that they're taking you along and you're just following blindly right mm-hmm. and it is a very comfortable place to be <laughs> be but you know like build almost like a a kind of I don't know pinch yourself you know and say like mm-hmm. come out of that because nothing mm-hmm. is 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 that simple or nothing everything has elements where you know, things don't apply nothing is a is a panacea or a silver bullet you have to do you have to really look at things in the context that they were they were said but also the context that you're gonna go ahead and and use them and i think that's all part of critical thinking right and sometimes finding that uh, using critical thinking because Using critical thinking while you are in a discussion can be quite tricky. This is something that I struggled as well. Like now I like to think I'm getting better at it. But for example, let's say that I'm speaking to someone and this person is is saying things that I might be thinking, hmm, I'm not quite sure about that, right? So I'm now much better because like I'm learning that people are not entirely wrong or entirely right. Right, and that's the same for for everything you read and in books and stuff. There is always some some interesting thing that you can get from that text or from from that opinion. And and, and now, instead of just saying, "Oh, this is all bullshit," right? So, and then you already start an argument with the person. So, so I think that you learn, like in terms of learning, like uh, in, in in maximizing your learning in every interaction. Is is asking questions, but not in a, in a confrontational or in a not in a confrontational way. It's really trying to go deeper, but in a nice way, so that you remain in that conversation, so that you really try to understand why that why that person is proposing that thing, or they think that whatever they are saying works well, or, or trying to understand the context. Sometimes is is a matter of clarifying. It's exactly what you said, Mesh. They they had an experience. They applied something in a specific context, but when they go in and they talk about that, and they will may not have the, the time or the they will not describe the entire context. They will just describe what worked. And sometimes just inquiring, okay, can you give me more details of the context that you applied? So did you encounter this kind of problems? Or sometimes it is, is a good way to to mine yeah. the information. Yeah, exactly. And I think often you, I mean, these kind of discussions turn difficult when you actually impose your view on mm-hmm. top of their view. But if you if you are just asking simple questions about more information, then, you know, and you, you, you're not doing that. You're not in any way uh, arguing against them. You're trying to understand more. And most people are you know, quite happy to then uh, try to explain further unless they know that they are wrong and they're just saying it and then they might react uh, abruptly to that, to, to those kind yeah, of Yeah, but that's not questions. always the case, right? There's always the case, but like uh, I find that normally in a professional environment, uh, people are not, when they are discussing solutions or, or knowledge or preferences, uh, they are not line or trying to uh, be disingenuous or stuff they are just they have a context in their head yeah <laughs> so, and often so they that, don't they don't bring it out right they just bring the, exactly. the, the 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 thing that they think would make the biggest impact yeah. out right and, even and without I, even I, realizing it 
Yeah, and I felt that, for example, even in certain books, um, uh, like for example, well, a lot of technical books that we like, and uh, so uh, some of the classic books and stuff. I see a lot of people criticizing books. Oh, this book said that I don't like this book because of this and that. But I, I think that uh, critical thinking for me is not to you should not take things literally. Critical thinking is not like a hardcore thing. For example, I'm gonna take everything literally and reject if I don't agree or, or doubt if it's. I think that you need to go beyond and ask, okay, what is the general message? Yes, there might be a few details in here that I might think, but but you still try to get the message. You know, you you, you use critical thinking for me, like when in terms of learning, right? So I'm talking about learning here. Critical thinking for me is a good mechanism for me to question the knowledge that is coming to me but in a positive way. I'm still after the learning. I'm still trying to learn something. I'm not just trying to blatantly, just reject, you know? Yeah, but exactly. You don't, you don't have to agree to get something out of something, yeah. so, you know, of uh, any body of knowledge. You don't have to agree with an argument to learn from it. Right? And I think that's, that's the important part. You know, this, this thing that you're uh, talking about where people, you know, kind of like reject the idea outright or you know the, the this deadlock that can happen when you're discussing uh, ideas is something that uh, I think that the name of the guy is Roger Schwartz. It, Roger Schwartz has a book called Smart Leaders, Smarter Teams. And in that book he talks about uh, about two different mindsets, right? What he calls the unilateral control mindset, which is based on a set of beliefs like you know there is uh, there is a correct solution no uh, uh, there's one leader in this room uh, that kind of you know uh, preconceived ideas right and that is that mindset is part of what creates that deadlock right that uh, before i was saying something around the the need for having a learning mindset even in the right context in order to be able to absorb and so on that's going to, you know, you can be in the right context, but if you're, ha if you're coming at it with this mindset that, you know, it's my solution is correct, no, or my opinion is, and, and you have these opinions that are strongly, uh, strongly held, <laughs> no, mm -hmm. um, then it's, it's really hard for any learning to happen, right? Like if you're not able to, to question that. Now in the book, he also talks about something called the common learning mindset, where you're kind of, uh, exploring the solution together instead of having taking a, a an adversarial kind of approach right and uh, and I feel like that's very relevant anywhere you are no if, if you were in a team if you were with colleagues if you're like having that mindset of um, you know there's not an absolute truth yes I am questioning things but out of the uh, betterment no of, of whatever it is the solution of the my understanding of the of, of the solution the problem the, or whatever no and i feel like that's something that is missed a lot of the time um on the on the let's say hurry to get stuff done no it's like i, I come here i'm going to tell you what needs to be done instead of having or taking the time to walk people through that let's say thought process no this is what i'm considering no you're talking about the context and not putting it out and so on no this is what these are the things that i'm considering these are the things that i'm prioritizing based on this i consider this and this and this i feel like this one is the the right approach or this and this are the right approach uh, you know and this is how i came to this conclusion that i now bring to you no uh, and, and that already makes it takes the conversation you know miles <laughs> ahead no mm -hmm. because then people can follow along and say oh wait you forgot this air here right this invalidates for your time and then you can easily say oh right let's let's see now that with this new information came uh to life no w what is the new approach right mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah that's, i feel like that's one of those things that 
I, I look back at my professional career, no, like at the beginning, like, no, no, this is the way, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the, the way. way. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this and, is the way, yeah, like the Mandalorian. <laughs> this exactly. is the way. <laughs> and, and, this is, and it's something that, you know, it really doesn't allow you to learn as well, right? Uh, because you are learning as you are exploring the, the problem together, right? So we, yeah. we are getting, uh, so we should start wrapping up. So on, on a, so what are the key things, both professionally and personal, that what are the key motivators for you to learn something? And what are the things that you like learning, learning about outside your profession? So things that you are interested in on a more personal side that you like, enjoy learning about. That's a very interesting question. <laughs> so, I mean, I like learning about the world. So I read a lot of news, right? Um, I, I, so th there are other things that I like to learn about, like stories. I love stories. So that's why I read a lot of fantasy fiction. I, I think it's a kind of learning as well, but even ancient kind of not, I don't really read, uh, learn a lot about the recent history, but I love ancient history. I, was, I mean, I was telling you earlier, I was reading mythos about mm. the Greek, Greek mythology, right? So that kind of stuff I, really makes me uh, kind of, I, I like to, to understand and learn. I, I also like learning about different ways of thinking. So kind of philosophy, but not theoretical philosophy. So like there is a website that I subscribe to called Eon Magazine and I read a lot of articles on there. And again, it's very kind of deeper conversations, deeper reflections on, on what makes us tick and how we think and all those kind of things. I also, so outside the work, those kind of things really, I like learning and also trying to learn Spanish. <laughs> I, I do enjoy the process, although it is it is quite painful. <laughs> Maybe I just enjoy pain. <laughs> Learn, learning is pain. Exactly. So, Jose, what about you? What are the things that you are interested in outside work and that you like learning more in depth? Let's so, say. so I I like to learn about um, human nature and how we you know, why we act the way we act and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so a lot about you know, behavioral psychology, that kind of stuff. Um, I also uh, like painting, like miniature painting in particular. So I, uh, the whole, you know, color and, you know, all, all these things I kind of uh, enjoy a lot. I'm not very good at it. I still need a lot of repetition to build up the skill, but uh, but it's very enjoyable, yeah, as a hobby uh, as well. Um, yeah, and I I also like uh, uh, you know puzzles and and that kind of stuff. So math puzzles or chess or stuff like that. I also suck at chess, so. <laughs> but that doesn't mean no. You, your question was, you yeah. know, what do you like learning? Exactly. So whether you're good at it or not. <laughs> exactly. What, what you are acquiring knowledge, not exactly. what you are skilled at, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so those things, like um, I, yeah. There, there's something around having a good puzzle, right? Like in, in solving it and, and getting that shot of, oh yes. No, I, I made it. Uh, or I finally understand this, or that kind of stuff. I like that a lot. Cool. What about you, then, Sandra? Yeah, so for me, like, I love uh, history and geography. Those have been all my, my favorite subjects since I was a kid. I love, like, world history uh, and uh, different types of geography as well, Geo geopolitics, but also normal geography as well. Um, those are things that I like a lot. Every now and again, I'm right, reading about those things. Uh, fantasy books. I know that I don't even know if it is considered learning, but like I read fantasy now in a different way than I used to read. I think that because I, I've been reading for now a long time, I've learned a lot from both of you actually for recommendations and stuff, mainly from Ash. But, um, but I now 
I, when I read them, I, I pay more attention to world, world building and, and how the, the books are structured and, and not only the story itself, but so those are things that I, I like a lot. And and then there is a, an old passion of mine that I I try to learn as much as I can. That is, I know this sounds a bit strange, but like this basketball, I still learn the fundamentals of the game and the different ways to move and the tactics and stuff, not only watching the games, but like, really learning the game itself, you know, like the, all the, the nitty gritties and so, so yeah, those are things completely unrelated to, to, to work that I still put a lot of, well, I dedicate some time in my, uh, to, to learn about, and, and I'm also learning Spanish as well in my spare time now. So, so yeah, no, good stuff. Okay, cool. Shall we wrap up? <laughs> Then yeah, sounds like a plan. <laughs> cool. All right. So if you uh thank you very much for, for watching this episode. Like as always, like if you want us to talk about something specific, let us know, put a comment. Uh also don't forget to subscribe to the channel, put a thumbs up, then you are notified every time you record a video. We record every week, uh, with a few exceptions, but mostly every week, you'll be notified when a new video is out. So Thank you very much, and I see you next time. Bye-bye. Take care.